Listen, Max. My respiratory system is failing, and... Uh, and it's only getting worse. I've heard the doctors talking about it when they thought I was zonked out. So, I know I'm just putting off the inevitable while my parents suffer along, and I will too. This isn't how I want things to end. What? What are you saying? I'm saying that being with you again has been so special. I just wanted to feel like when we were kids running around Arcadia Bay and everything was possible, and you made me feel that way today. I want this time with you to be my last memory. Do you understand? Yes, I do. All you have to do is crank up the IV to 11. Hello, and welcome back to Life is Strange. So in the poll over the week, there was quite a bit of discussion in the thread why we should refuse or why we should accept. And it came down to a lot of people saying, this is Chloe's right, and this is the right thing to do, is to let her escape from her suffering. So we're going to choose accept. Chloe, I'll just drift asleep, dreaming of us here together, forever. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you for following your dreams. Don't forget about me. Never. I love you, Max. See you around. Sooner than you think. Sorry, William. Someday Dad'll get one of them newfangled computers. I hope the flash didn't scare you, Max. This is a keeper. Hello? Hey, honey. What? Oh, I didn't know you had to get groceries. Of course I'll come pick you up. Shit, where are my keys? That's a dollar for the swear jar. You mean your college fund? Aha! You can't hide from me forever. And no Chloe and Max wine tasting session. Dad! Don't blow it, because tonight your mother promised to make us a world-famous salmon surprise with chocolate cake for dessert. Max, you'll be here too, right? He's never leaving me. That makes all of us. Max, you are being so fucking strange. Like you're never gonna see us again. Chloe, I'm so sorry. I tried to make things different for you. I, I did try. I'm sorry. I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but come on. 
You have made things different, like my whole life. You're my best friend. I've got you and a great family. What's to be sorry for? We'll be best friends forever. And when we grow up, we're taking over the world. Listen, whatever happens, I want you to be strong. Even if you feel like I wasn't there for you. Because I will never abandon you, Chloe. I'll always have your back. Always. You get one kiss and now you're all over me? I'm just... I'm just... I'm so glad you're here. You sound high, but thanks for the morning grope. Since we were up all night playing CSI Arcadia Bay, I was still spaced out here trying to put all this info together. Max, did you forget we've gone over this? I hope you weren't messing around with time while I was sleeping. Not anymore. I'm just spaced out too. Welcome back to the real world, Max. And I, never lose my I don't think I can ever tell Chloe about what happened. Let's look at the big board and see all our pieces in the puzzle so far. So we're back. In the real reality. Before we do anything else... Getting lost in all this shit. Let's take a photo of our friend. There's our first photo of this episode. And actually, uh, while we're in here, let's get caught up on the text messages of this reality. Because, wow, we have a lot of them. So, uh, the first thing to cover is... So, the last thing we did in this reality was Chloe got really mad at us and dropped us off at the school. So, it looks like later this evening... Or, Wednesday evening. Hey, man, I suck again. She apologizes. And then she would said we should come over for an all-nighter. We should start getting into detective mode. And so that's where we're at right now with uh, Max and Chloe. They've been researching all night, trying to find any clues to what might have happened to Rachel. And if we scroll through, we've also got messages from Juliet here. Where Max is asking if she knows anything about Frank. And Juliet gets annoyed that we're trying to be a reporter without her assistance. You can't keep secrets from Ace reporter Juliet Watson. We also have this amazing text message from Justin. Where he, uh, asked Bag texted us, which is incredible. We see that Max was also asking... If Justin knows anything about Frank, ask Nathan. No thanks. Let's see. 
We've got excessive text messages from Warren, as usual. Thanks for helping with my experiment. And he complains about the A- that he got because we did not edit it to an A+. I don't, I don't care, Warren. See, we've got a text from our mom. Wondering, uh, what's going on with the weather up there? Something's kind of fucked up. But don't worry, mom! Lisa's alive! Everything's great. Message from Kate. Asking if we're still thinking about coming to visit her in the hospital. Which we will, in, uh, in some time. Message from our dad. I just got a weird text warning me that my nosy daughter better stop watching others and look out for herself. So we've got fucking Nathan Prescott texting our cool dad with his cool dad beard. God damn it, Nathan, you suck. Don't bother our dad. Message from Courtney. Oh my god, the all caps texting. Let me know. I just, I can't read this as anything but screaming about fashion makeovers. Courtney being nice-ish. I believe that's uh, all the texts we've got. We might as well just do a quick flip through our journal here. Here's the start of Thursday. Let's never do the time warp again. However, I do believe... Let's see. There's a couple pages. Here we go. Here's the last page that we had from Wednesday. And we actually weren't able to read any of these because they were written while Max was in the car with Chloe, I guess. I like this drawing of Max hugging Chloe. Covering the alternate universe and how fucked up everything was there. Goodbye, William. That sucks. So we can uh, take a look at some of the materials that they've been looking at here. Damn. This is a serious expose on the Prescotts. Finally. So we can see that uh, the Prescotts have been developing on Native American tribal grounds, tribal lands, and Native American groups are filing class action lawsuits. Uh, also, it looks like changes to the area have reduced amount of fish and other sea life due to the Prescotts. Oh, the snow doe's still here. That snow doe always makes me think of William and Chloe. And the gun that we took back from Frank is also still here. I still feel sketchy about giving Chloe the gun back. Yeah, but Frank doesn't have it, so, you know. Fuck that guy. I should have known just erasing that phone message wouldn't stop the police. Ah, so the police seem to have noticed that we broke into the pool the other night. Well, let's- it's fine. Don't worry about it. This butterfly photo seems like a million years ago. How much time have I altered since? Chloe is still keeping this really nice photo in her wallet. I'm so sorry, William. It's not fair you had to die twice. Everything that happened with William is pretty awful. So, anyway. This uh, giant illustration from when the girls were kids is going to serve as our information board for clues to what might have happened to Rachel Amber. So close, yet so far away. We have to do three main things. Right. Uh, what things? One, decipher Frank's logbook. Two, get Nathan's phone to find out where he's been during the Vortex Club parties with Kate and Rachel. And see whatever hidden shit he's got in his messages. Three, beat Step Douche Dan until he tells us about Frank, Nathan, and the Darkroom. And I do have a gun now. 
keep it in your pants. We'll have to do this on our own. Dude, at least let me kick his ass, then rewind. <sighs> Fine, whatevs. It's your power. Which I can't waste on shit like that. Or Blackwell would be in big trouble. At least you let me take that money to pay Frank off. <sighs> Don't remind me. I just want him off your back. Our back. I know. You should get busy in the garage to see what dirt you can dig up. I'm gonna cyberstalk some names and see where that leads. Or to who. And be careful of Stepcrack. He's not gonna be a happy camper after you reamed him yesterday and Mom is giving him the boot. I'm on it, partner. I can't abuse this level of my rewind power. It's way too dangerous, and I need to navigate the present without messing up the past. Oh no, that poor little bird has been trapped in here. And that was actually the uh, the Blue Jay from Monday. He's still here. And he's still in the bathroom, so get out of here. Save electricity. And I think if we open this window, we should be able to... Whoop. Whoop de boop. Should be able to scoot him out. There we go. Get out of here, you. Fly. Be free. Alright, so let's head downstairs and see if we can't find any more information that David might have been hiding. You won this battle, Max. You broke up my family. I salute you. David! I didn't try to hurt you. Ever. But I won't let anybody hurt Chloe. Too late, isn't it? You just better be damn careful with her. Don't you wander off into the dark. And that's a direct result of us siding with Chloe in the argument previous. David isn't any different from me when he's looking at those family photos. <sighs> Warren trying to wrangle the threesome. Wow. Absolutely not. Goodbye. This TV is on, and it's usually not. Those poor whales are like beached angels. What is going on here? We can see the whales are also dead in this reality. We have another uh, sit and think sort of moment, so let's let's do that. Somehow, I existed in this whole other reality, but I, I don't know what happened. The more I use my power, the more I see how little control I have over what happens. Now, Max Caulfield exists in two or maybe three different realities. How can I have a destiny? These alternate lives exist? I hate the thought of William and Joyce finding Chloe like that. <sighs> Thinking about all these lifelines almost makes my head hurt worse than the rewind. So that was another thing that came up in discussion in the thread. Was, uh... Do the other realities continue existing? Does the reality where Chloe was paralyzed still exist? My butterfly sketch doesn't exist in this timeline. 
Like William. Max the Time Bandit strikes again. It's hard to say. Um, we may have just changed the events of this timeline. Or maybe we created a parallel universe. To think this all started with my vision of a tornado. Nobody knows what's going on with the weather. Continuing theme. Looks like David already booked a room. The Bloch Hotel. Sounds very fancy. So let's start poking around. It looks like David finished his car repairs. Maybe there's some new clues around. There is a little bit more to poke through here, like these emails. Should I have signed the petition? Blackwell sure isn't safe and private anymore. So we can see that even though the petition succeeded, Principal Wells is talking with David Madsen about doing something... doing something anyway, which is kind of shitty of him. Oh, meow, Miss Grant. Twist that knife. Also, because of this email, I think at the end of episode two, David was suspended from his security job no matter what. Because uh, he sucks. At least he has one weird fan. And I don't know who would have sent this email. I, I want to say a Prescott? I don't... Mm. Wish I had surveillance footage of that conversation. David Madsen trying to suck up to Principal Wells to get his job back, and, uh, yeah, I am upset about losing my position. Fuck off. Surveillance cameras at Pan Estates? David must be working for the Prescotts, too. So Pan Estates is the new development from the Prescotts that, um, we saw the article upstairs that the Native American tribes are suing the Prescotts over. Apparently David works there too. I wonder if David is going to the party. This party is happening tonight, Thursday 10-10. So the obvious change is these locked lockers. But there is one thing here that I want to look at before we investigate that. Oh! Look at the baby blue jay eggs in the nest. I, I better move his plank if I want to take the shot. Excuse me. Just one picture, please. Another photo from my Arcadia Bay wildlife series. And real quick, I'm going to rewind us moving that plank so we don't disturb the baby birds. There we go. Good as new. So we see that this locker has been padlocked. Whoa, that is a serious padlock on that locker. Hey David, whatcha hiding? So, this padlock. In this room, there is a crowbar that we can find and use. Just pry this open, you know, rewind like it never happened. But there's a much more elegant solution to this padlock, because we've seen this padlock before, and this is the same padlock we saw in episode 3 on David's counter, which actually had the, uh, the combination already entered into it. And that combination was 7-1, seven, 7-1. One, seven, one. Done. All right. Open sesame. Oh, maps, notes, coordinates, photos of Kate, Nathan. Oh, yes. So this is actually a record of license plates and locations of where those license plates were seen. I believe that Twin Peaks is actually Chloe's license plate. So he's been tracking 
where she was, which is creepy. Here we've got this photo where, you know, he should have probably intervened between students fighting, but he's weird. Different photos of people's license plates. Photo of me looking cranky. And by me, I mean Max. Score. Back to Chloe now. And because we didn't destroy the lock, Max just uh, snaps it right back on there. Good as new. All William's stuff. Shit. Well, let's go grab Chloe and continue our investigations. It's amazing how much drama this living room has seen. Yo, Chloe! Are you ready yet? I have to get back to my dorm. Are we happy? Very happy. I hit the secret file jackpot. Kate, Nathan, and Rachel. Plus some location coordinates. David is like a one-man surveillance army. Now let's get the hell out of here before we get busted. But I absolutely have to go see Kate in the hospital right now. I want to find out how she's doing. This is definitely Kate's floor. The hospitals always freak me out. I I hear you. But imagine how Kate feels. I'm so glad I I get to see her again. I hope it's not too weird for her. No, she'll be stoked to see you. Who wouldn't be? This be it. I'm a little nervous. Just go in there and be your friend. I'll wait out here so you can chill by yourselves. I was a total dick for blowing a fuse when you answered Kate's call the other day. Good thing you ignored me. I had no idea what shit she was going through. And you saved her. Like me. I'm sorry. Thanks, Chloe. But don't be sorry. We're all on the same team. Team Max. Let Kate know we're gonna string Nathan up by his balls then. Oh, yes. (laughs) I'm on it. Max! Oh, Kate. I thought I'd never see you again. I feel so ridiculous. I'm so sorry. Kate, listen to me. You have nothing to be sorry about. Other people do. You do not know how happy I am to see you. You look awesome. Is it a stupid question if I ask how you're doing? Now that you're here, I'm doing even better. I'm so grateful to you for coming up to the roof to talk me down. Max, I felt so lost and alone. When I saw how much you cared, how hard you were trying, you made me realize I wasn't alone. Thank you. Kate, there are so many people who love you and want to help you. I know. You should see all the letters and postcards. I gave most of the flowers to other patients here because they need them more than me. I'm keeping the balloons, though. One of the nurses gave me some pen and paper so I could do some drawings. I love your illustrations. They got kind of dark there for a while. But I have an idea for a new children's book about bullying. I was thinking of having some photographs in there, too. I hope that's a subtle hint that you'll let me take the photographs for the book. Was that subtle? You better take the pictures, Max. I'm going to be here for another day until my family comes out to visit. How are they treating you? Like they need to protect me forever. They're so upset. And I know they feel guilty, even though they didn't do anything. I was surprised how many students from Blackwell wrote me. Daniel, Mr. Jefferson, even Victoria wrote me a very sweet note. And I believe she was being real. Me too. I'm glad you believe again, Kate. I'm working on it, Max. I just pray I can get this drawing right. So, 
Including this scene might make the video run a little long, but I felt like maybe it was important for us to have a light note to end this video on after how dark the previous video was. Kate is doing great. She is drawing, she's getting letters and flowers. Principal Wells knows how to step it up when he wants to. This is a genuinely really nice letter from Principal Wells, and it's probably the first nice thing I've seen him do in this game. That is so sweet. Even Victoria signed. But not Nathan. Victoria Chase might be queen bitch, but she's not evil. So not only did Victoria sign this group card from everyone at the school, <laughs> except Nathan, Victoria sent her own postcard. I know you hate me and you should, but I only want to see your smile again. And that's, I mean, that's about as genuine as Victoria gets. That's really sweet. Let's see. We can just sit and spend time with Kate. It's amazing to just sit here quiet with Kate again. I don't think I'll ever know how much destiny I'm changing. But whoever said we only have a single fate? Time travel is such a mindfuck. It's also probably worth mentioning that Chloe's apology out in the hallway for freaking out when we answered Kate's call is really wonderful. Oh wow, look at that mustard. Holy crap. Kate, what the fuck? Those are nice flowers. And from Taylor? Wow, props to her. So it was a nice moment of, I guess, redemption for Chloe's shitty behavior previously. Oh, I love Kate's happy rainbow flock. Kate's drawings are very good. I feel like they express a large part of her personality. Kate, it is so good to hang out with you again. Max, I owe you so much. And I can tell you want to talk to me about something. I always want to talk to you. We missed our tea session this week. That was so not cool. We need to plan, like, a tea shop tour of Portland. Oh, yes. And you could bring Warren along, too. No boys allowed. <laughs> You are funny, Max. And right. Because we saw Victoria's postcard, we have this option available to us. I saw Victoria's letter. How does that make you feel? Max, I know Victoria can be... Uh... Not nice. But I do believe in forgiveness and redemption. I might be naive, but... I feel her struggle. Me too. I could have taken a picture of her covered in paint, but I didn't, and we had a genuine moment. We all have our moments. Why do you think she acts so mean? She's a bitch. That doesn't fit this conversation at all. She's insecure. If you're comfortable with yourself, you don't need to act superior. Victoria doesn't look like she has much to be insecure about. If anybody could make Victoria see the light, it would be Kate Marsh. No. I think it will take more than that, Max. I want you to know I'm this close to getting all the info I need about Nathan. Nathan Prescott has to pay for what he did. And we have to stop him from hurting anybody else. Well, I did get his ass suspended, so that might be a start. You did? Oh, right on, Max. I love how fearless you are. So what is going on with him now? I assume he'll show up at the Vortex Club party tonight like nothing happened. And nobody can do anything to him after what he did. 
We're going to stop him. I just have to find Nathan's room number, get inside, and get the clues I need. Max, please let me help. I can get the number, and I'll text it to you, okay? Of course, Kate. I can't do this without you. Now it's time for Nathan to watch out for us. I have to get back to our uh, mission. You don't know how much it means to see you again. I do. That's why I love you, Max. Thanks for taking care of my bunny. Tell Alice I'll see her soon. What a nice scene. Just a nice break from the drama that's going on. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Well, how is she? She's still Kate Marsh. Thank God. I'm glad we came to see her. Thanks for coming with me. Now let's go pay a visit to Nathan Prescott. That little prick is not going to be glad when he sees us.